Hey guys, welcome to Tech Crush. We're starting a new segment today called This Week, this week in Science, Science and Technology. technology. First off, I'd like to say hello and thank you to all of my new subscribers. Hello. Thank you. And also I'd like to say sorry to a lot of my old subscribers. I haven't been able to put out videos here lately. Uh, I just recently had a new baby, so, so life has been fucking chaotic for me. This is baby Melody. This is the reason I haven't been able to make very many videos recently. So say sorry, Melody. Okay, she's not going to. Okay, so now on to some of the big stories that happened this past week, or so. A data protection company in Hong Kong has uncovered a website that has been streaming thousands of webcams in the US, France, and Great Britain. Remote access to these webcams have been gained through users who have left their default passwords unchanged. The feed is originating from a site that's based in Russia. It's being rerouted to a couple other places to try to hide its trail. Authorities have not released the site's domain in order to try to stop more traffic from flooding to the site. Some of these webcams are showing like babies in their cribs, uh, home security systems, and other types of personal video streams. We actually have some of the sensitive footage that was collected by one of these webcams now. In the bathroom. Trying to use the bathroom for five seconds. Just another reason to make sure you have a strong password on everything that you have. Nobody wants to see that kind of shit on the internet. News coming from a leading computer security company today that has found what is to be the most malicious piece of software ever seen, nicknamed Rain. Once downloaded onto a computer, this software has the ability to capture screenshots, extract passwords, and even recover your deleted files. Experts are speculating that with the advanced sophistication of this software, it was more than likely developed over many years with a lot of funding. This indicates that it was probably developed by a nation state as an espionage tool, rather than a private organization like, let's say, Anonymous. The hardest hit by this powerful software has been Russia, Saudi Arabia, and Ireland. Experts also say that the software closely resembles a worm virus, Stuxnet, that was believed to be developed by the United States in order to take down Iran's nuclear program. So we might be in the midst of a cyber war going on right beneath our noses. With the NSA patrolling almost all the data flowing over the internet, it would seem almost impossible for them not to know about something of this magnitude. With Russia being hit the hardest from this malicious software, it begs the question if the front lines of the cyber war haven't already been drawn. Meanwhile, in Japan, a firm has unveiled its new project to build an underwater city. Awesome. The city would spiral nine miles into the seabed and is expected to serve its first residents as early as 2030. They plan on building multiple units, and each unit would hold about 5,000 residents. They will be using 3D printing to build most of the modules, and some other very innovative ideas to keep the structure as green as possible. This is the one thing that I really do love about Japan. They're not afraid to take that step off the deep end of crazy. And when it comes to innovation, that's really what it takes sometimes. Also noted, the designer of this project was the same guy who proposed a 250 mile wide solar panel belt on the moon that would supply energy here to Earth via lasers and microwave stations. I think this guy might actually be a Bond villain of the future. I'm not for sure, but we'll see. Neil deGrasse Tyson always talks about how he wants to go fishing on Jupiter's moon Europa, and yesterday his wish got a little bit more likely to actually happen. Republican Representative John Cumberson of Texas, a huge advocate of the exploration of Europa, has assumed leadership of the House Commerce, Justice, Science, Appropriations Committee. This committee is responsible for funding of different government agencies that includes NASA. With Representative Cumberson on their side, NASA actually stands a fair chance of being able to fund a mission to the icy moon. There are a lot of other factors that might actually gum up this plan, but we won't know anything for sure till the 2016 budget requests come out in February of next year. So fingers crossed. Speaking of space news, NASA also outlined their plan for the next 15 years of space exploration. Most of this list includes new space telescopes and satellites that'll be going into orbit in deep space. But there are some really amazing things on this list, like a new rover that's going to be landing on Mars in 2020, a manned mission to land on an asteroid as early as 2021, and the 15 year plan ending in the first man or woman to land on the Mars in 2030. As someone who's really interested in space exploration and discovery in general, along with the chance to actually get to explore Europa, 
This is the most exciting thing that I've heard in a really long time. Maybe I'll actually get to see this before I die. That would be awesome. But as with anything that deals with a budget that's dictated by the government, I won't get my hopes up. That is unless China decides to put a military base on Mars then you can guarantee that we'll actually be there by tomorrow. So guys, that's just some of the things that happened this week in science and technology. If you like this episode, feel free to hit the like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Tech Crush if you guys want to keep seeing more videos like this. Also, this is a new thing that I'm doing. If you have any advice to make things a little bit better, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments below. My name's Malcolm. I hope to see you guys here next time on Tech Crush.